So hi guys, this is going to be the making of um, Park Life. I'm going to try not to take too long. I've taken some notes of stuff that I want to talk about. So uh, hopefully this will be a little bit more focused than my last sort of general ramble and chit chat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about where the idea of Park Life came from, some of the struggles I had at the beginning, uh, the fact that I changed my plans part way through. Um, I'm going to talk about puppeteering in Moho um, versus animation, mouth shapes, pin bones from arms, and then we'll sort of wrap up how I rendered it. And then I'll have some thoughts about uh, things that I learned from not only from making this specific cartoon, but also from the whole process, the whole idea of me posting a completed cartoon two weeks on my animation my dedicated animation channel and how that has been going in regard to this does that make sense okay i'm i'm winging it all right i've not written the script we're going to see how we go okay so um before we start i just want to say one thing shameless self-promotion go to coinupanimator.com that's my website it's my blog my vlog my blog I've got I've got all sorts of stuff. I've got I've got a, a tiny little shop where I you know I've got T-shirts and downloadable STLs. I will be doing print on demand soon. I've got other examples of my work. I've done some documentaries and behind the stuff scene stuff as well. And this is like the hub uh, for all things Coin Up Animator. Uh, I've got a portfolio there. I've got a newsletter as well. That, as I said, there's a little shop as well. Um, uh, which has a few bits and pieces for sale on there but uh, just no pressure don't have to buy anything just go to the website have a poke around follow me maybe because that's where everything comes together coin up animations and coin up animator okay all right let's get on with it i've rambled enough let's talk about park life with phil and pal pat how did i make it and what did i learn should i do some music or something so Park Life um, originally was uh, an idea I had back just coming out of university, basically. I studied at UE, uh, University of West England, animation course, which is fantastic. It's more like an art school than a technical school, so I was sort of torn between doing Bournemouth or UE, but I liked what I'd heard about uh, UE, plus the fact it was on my doorstep, I didn't have to quit my job. Um, and I got on really well with the uh, interviewing tutor. We just geeked out for the whole interview. I don't think we re even really talked about what my goals were. We just talked about animation and stuff. And uh, he fought for me to get in. So bless, bless you, John, for that. Um, and whilst I was there, it's very, very much CG, CG, CG. Want to work in games? I just want to work in CG. That's all I want to do. And then my focus was there, so I didn't do any really, really that much 2D. I did a little bit of TV paint and soft frame animation just in the first year for the heck of it. Just you know, and then I kind of settled down and got into my groove. But coming out, um, I bought a license years ago for Moho when it was on special and I update, and I never really used it. I never really got into it. And I've used the time I've had in between jobs to learn new skills so i've been learning some networking skills learning moho uh, learning a bit more about maya and blender and blah 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 you can just never stop learning i've really been getting into moho um and i've kind of fallen in love with moho because it's really quick it's almost like you're cutting out a stage with CG it is very front loaded. There's a lot of technical stuff and sometimes there's like too much. You just want to get on and create. It's kind of like the computer still getting in, you, in, in your way and very much kind of like a one man band in my, in my animations. I have stories that I want to tell and that they're bursting to get out and I really want to do an animation and I design my own characters and I convert them into 3D and Moho is kind of like well, don't convert it into 3D, just rig the characters you've designed. And that's that's how I've come to using Moho predominantly. I'm, 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 I'm not escaping CG by any sh shape of a ma or, or, or imagination. I'm still definitely going to uh, be sticking around with that. But um, that's kind of like where I come from, from the Moho point of view. So I've been using this whole post 
uh, a video every couple of weeks as a very what do we call it uh, a, a, as a deadline as a, as a goal to learning more about moho because i figured if i learn another package then maybe i can get a work in a parallel um s specialty basically because it's spline based animation anyway isn't it it's the same thing it's just i'm doing 2d instead of 3d i'm still working with splines still working with bones still working with rigging it's basically the same thing only in two dimensions so that's the idea of using moho i was always going to be using moho i thought with uh, park life and park life itself was this idea that i spanned to a few people at the university but uh, really never sort of got off the ground uh, i didn't push it too much to be honest and i've been it's in my back pocket i've got a few ideas that i've been working on to pitch to studios to try and develop into something and park life was just screaming at me i'd already written some stuff i've done some voice work for it but i hadn't actually gone the stage and made um any anim animations and i've been working up to this with all of my animations so far and corn up animations have literally been um uh, working up to doing uh to doing just this you know like um so just interrupting right there uh the one thing that i realized i didn't i didn't actually chat about was um what park life actually is so park life is going to be a series of uh, animations set in a park that's it that's the only thing it doesn't have to be the same park it doesn't have to be the same animation style but the whole point of the pitch was that it would be the the theme would be park park life you know how we enjoy our parks or don't you know they're meeting spaces they're places where you come together and enjoy yourself and it's an opportunity to show different people in different lights it could be comedy in, in, in my case rude comedy it might just be like beautiful feral animation of leaves moving or fish jumping out of the water whatever i've got a whole litany of characters i want to bring under the umbrella of park life my uh life is pretty shit characters the two flies um tony and todd are going to come to park life as well because they they fit in really nicely and a couple of their scripts actually fit in perfectly so i don't have to redo the scripts and i'm working up to park to bringing them in as well i've got um a couple of couple of crows or maybe a crow and a magpie i haven't decided exactly on the characters yet um doing similar things to phil and pat you know just chatting i've got like a rude dog i've got an angry goose i've got i've got stuff in the park that um is going to come to park life that's not to say i won't be doing other animations as well but that's going to be part of it uh anyway that was the pitch it's very very simple a series of cartoons slice of lights vignettes animations set in parks so that's what i started doing and um i i created i did some design initial designs for the characters and they were fine uh the only problem that i had was that when i actually came to record the actual uh video itself uh, or the audio itself uh, these characters and you can see them here these are the original designs when i did the voices because i got a limited range i'm not really an actor um the voices were wrong um well the, either the voices were wrong or the design were, was wrong and it was much easier for me to go back and redesign the characters than it was to uh, change my voice because i couldn't do that so that's why i did it i went back and um uh, redesigned that but uh, you can see here I have very much a sort of Ronald Searle sort of look to uh, my illustrations and that's what I was originally going to do but I kind of feel like these two these people are too middle class for the actual dialogue they're talking about um, my my, my uh, bonus mum said to me it's very Derek and Clive and I think she's she's sort of spot on and so i went you know i went back i went back and did some bits and pieces i tried you know in in between doing molds um i tried to do some sculpting and uh yeah yeah i really struggled i mean he he would have been fine but it took me so long and it would have taken so long to rig all of this what it did do is 
I started started to get an idea of who the character of Phil was. Like, for some reason, he had a hat. Maybe he was a boxer. He had a bit of a broken nose, a bit of a Roman nose. And uh, it was from the sculpting that I really came back to the 3D. And uh, that's really where I came back to uh, creating these guys. So design-wise, that's that's where we're, well, I'm at, I was at. And... Um, yeah, so um, sort of talked around the houses about that a little bit. So initially, let's look at the initial puppet that I did for for um, Phil. Initially, I was going to puppeteer. The idea, Moho has a system in place where you can, um, let me give you an example, you can grab hold of an item and if you press play, it will record the keyframes. I've just realized that I've switched off my mouse. Now, it doesn't work with a graphics tablet which is a bit of a bit of a bastard but if I start from say here and let's grab him and I just press the play button I can move him around although this is oh, I didn't record my keyframes let's try again I think this is a very early iteration I think because I've got a whole bunch of stuff here that shouldn't be here Let's just try out the mouth. Initially, what I was going to do with the mouth is just puppeteer the mouth, right? So we're just going to talk like a puppet, um, like a Muppet, basically. And there's something... What has gone on here? Interesting. That's... Okay. Let's just get rid of the, the, these bones first. Okay, okay. So, that's very interesting. So I've done something really kind of stupid. Let's get rid of you. Let's just get rid of all of this crap. Start again. That's better. Sorry about that. Right, so the mouth was going to move like a Muppet. Okay, so Moho has a um feature which if you grab, so you grab hold of the bone you want to use, press the space bar or play, and the timeline will move. You can see it's moving there, and you can puppeteer the mouth open and close, which I thought was going to go fine. And you see it inserts all those keyframes. Problem was I wasn't that happy with it, wasn't happy with exactly how, how it was going. Oh, well, that's really weird that that's doing something strange um, so yeah oh, yeah so what I decided to do is that I would what I'd actually go and do is actually I changed the design of the character a bit and uh, did mouth movements on the character this is actually the completed piece and if we zoom in you can see that uh, the mouth here is initially it was going to be switches so Moho's has a switch layer which basically you set up the mouths in advance or, uh, or the mouth shapes in advance and what you do with that is uh, then you just employ a switch so you know SH have a has a certain way of speaking and A has a different shape of the mouth and all you do then is you literally just switch between the layers and that's what I was going to do but then I thought mm, I've already made it difficult for myself by going back and redesigning the characters and obviously there's a, a bit involved in that in, in rigging as well but then I thought I'm not happy I need a bit of practice I need a bit of practice anyway on the mouth movement so why don't I just simply go and hand animate all the mouth shapes which is kind of insane when you think about it. It's a lot of work in you. It's a lot of work. So I set up a frame by frame layer, and I think you can see it just down here. If we go in, you can see that these are the keyframes. Now they're sort of basically on twos, threes, fours. Whenever I needed the mouth to move, I just I just drew a new new mouth shape, and. Uh, Moho has a very perfunctionary, very basic um, mouth shape um, frame by frame animation system, which is um, 
I mean, you can see here, add a frame, delete a frame, duplicate a frame. That's your choices, basically. It's not TV paint um, by a long stretch of imagination. But I did find, especially get at, towards the end of doing the animation, that maybe I was getting quicker at, I was at least at the same speed I felt, or the le level of com convenience as it was searching for the shape, mouth shapes. Um, so all that practice, it took about two days to do the mouth. Um, I mean, not a constant 48 hours, but uh, you know, I was doing other stuff in between then. But it took me roughly two days to get it like completed into the state that I wanted. But the pro what was good was that I needed the practice. And at the end of the practice, my drawing, I got nearly as quick as just looking for a mouth shape. And the benefit of, of, of creating specific mouth shapes for specific time in the animation is that we added much more character because these are quite flat characters so really the only the only uh, form of the greatest form of expression I felt would be in the mouth shape so that's the one part I need to animate and quite frankly I enjoyed it I really really enjoyed that it's kind of you just put the headphones on and you just zone out and you spend two days doing mouth shapes which I did not find tedious at all I really enjoy it because it's really expressive and I quite I quite enjoy frame by frame animation if I if I'm completely honest here so um, yeah um, that was fun and I think I may do that again may not we'll have to see what happens um, on the subject of puppeteering yes I puppeteered this fairly quickly um you can see let me just do the head movement i think you can see if you look at the keyframes of the bones um always look at that um that i, I wiggled him sort of about a bit i guess is is what i'm trying trying to say i puppeteered a lot of him so i puppeteered his basic swings and his head, so he's nodding. So I, like once I'd done the mouth, I went back, listened to it, and sort of nodded his head as he was speaking, like you would do, like a muppet, like a puppeteer. And then I animate, use that as the guideline for the other animation, like the shoulder shrugs and all that kind of stuff. So it was a very, very quick process, and I would do things differently. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I think I would do things differently. I did have some problems. I found that because these, both these models are quite. Uh, complicated it was very glitchy um, puppeteering normally isn't very it's very smooth very easy but it kept sort of stuttering and it, it was introducing weird glitches now that was probably in part to the amount of detail in the puppetry the cam I, I did switch off the camera movement but it didn't seem to make too much of a di difference but I I had some problems with my um, look so um, I created a tilt and a tur head turn, um, which would uh, allow this uh, model to, you know, look in a different direction, look up, look down, and the looking from side worked fairly okay. I still don't quite, I don't like the way that the hair and the ears flip over to the front of the model from the back. I, um, I've got to f figure out a better way of doing that, but um, yeah. I mean, it looks like, like the head turning is fine. The problem is, is that I decided to do a tilt and I used, there is a tool here, which is like a shear tool, rotate X and Y. I tried the shear tool as well. So you kind of use like a combination of those to try and get the angle I wanted, but I couldn't get exactly what I wanted. So the head doesn't really tilt properly. Um, and there are weird spots where the two conflicting actions with the tilt head and the turn head are controlled with a pin bone that allows me to do two things at once tilt and turn the head so it makes puppeteering much much easier so i could do all this stuff puppeteering however there are it they sort of conflict with each other and this is because of the different ways that i've made the model and it sometimes just didn't tilt the way that i wanted it to um, there's something to do with the bones. I'm still learning. You can see that maybe the tilt head, like look at the head there. If you look at the tilt head bone, it doesn't really 
could go all the way down to the bottom. It's a, basically it was it was a bad way of doing it. What I should have done, it, what I'm going to do next time, is draw the turnarounds and draw the tilts, and then I'm going to trace these lines as per the drawing. I think it's very, very it's worthwhile doing that because the drawing tools in my are not very good, quite frankly, especially the distortion tools, the shear, um, this. This rotate layer didn't work out very well at all, so uh, yeah, not not entirely happy with that. Um, so yeah, lesson there. Um, but um, all in all, it was very straightforward. Obviously, I animated the um, the camera movement as well. Um, initially, I had it started started on Phil listening to the conversation. Um, but I felt it was more interesting just to start. I uh, sorry, Pat was listening to Phil, um, but I, in the end, I decided to uh, focus on Phil, and it, I think it turned out to the right to be the right thing. Okay, um, give me a sec. I'm just going to pause. Uh, right, so rendering. Um, so sorry, I just had to call up uh, Resolve because I forgot to uh, preload this. Um, so uh, once the animation was done, and I was happy with it, and we were at the stage uh, that I, you know I was I was satisfied. Um, let's view it actually with the output only. So it's ready to go. What I needed to do then was to output this in because um, what was this? And then when there's something up there that's not not adding up, um, okay. So let's get on to rendering. So once I was happy with the animation, I needed to render this out. Now I was going to render it out in three parts. Um, I'll render out the guys first, uh, then render out the background because the background's got some movement. So um, and then I'll render out the titles. Now luckily with the titles, they come up when the cameras stop, so I didn't need to render out the whole animation for the titles. All I need to and all I need to do um, is actually render them out as a single file, and I could import that into Fusion. That was the beauty. So that would that saved me at least one third of my render, and that's the beauty of working with separate composites is that you can speed up the process in in that regard. Um, the titles themselves, you see when they come up, um, they I I had them coming up roughly um, where I wanted them to, but there was nothing fancy about it. It was just like that's where they're going to be. And um, there's the camera movement that controls all of this. So I did have to export the the background plate as a separate plate, um, and then Phil and the rest of the guys um, as their own thing. And I just did that as an individual render. I literally came up here. I didn't I didn't batch edit them at all. I literally just exported the animation, um, chose how I wanted to do it. I actually did it as a PNG image sequence. Uh, selected the folder. I created individual folders: background plate, uh, park life fill, and pat plates, and then the uh, the, um, the titles as well. Uh, but as, as you can see, that actually, there's probably two of them in there. You can't see them actually, but there's all. All I did was just render out a still picture, basically, for the the park life graphic. And if we go over to Resolve. Then I have this very, very simple, straightforward um, composite uh, tree uh, where I literally I just load in fill and pat, which is the foreground, the background plate, and then the titles as well. Um, and doing it this way gives me gives me options that I don't have if I just rendered everything out in one go. You know, there's things that I can do. I was very happy. I, I played around with some different color choices with uh, Phil and Pat, but I was happy with how they turned out. Um, not that happy with how YouTube interpreted the colors, though, but that's something to think about for another day. Um, and I was thinking of cutting out the bench, but I didn't do that in the end. I just ran out of time. It would have been a better idea to actually split the background plate into uh, two layers or we'll have two layers of background plates you would have the trees and then what you would actually have as you can see where's the titles come up about here uh, 
the bench itself should have been cut out I should have rotoed that out and had that as a separate layer because then what that would have allowed me to do is then blur the background I mean what I really wanted to do is once I worked out the camera angles is what I really wanted to do is go back to the park and shoot this again but shoot it with the camera movement using the camera movement of the animation um, let's just get this back up, up on the screen come on Oh. just using this camera movement as a guide for the camera that would have been fantastic because then I could have blurred things out and, I, and it would have been a real moving black background plate and then I would have had to comp the boys onto the plate itself um, afterwards I disappear on me now um, so make sure they sit their asses down but there wasn't enough time to do that and in the end I didn't need to do it because actually what I did I blurred out the background to start with and by the time we get to the bench you'll see that the bench is nearly unblurred and that was good because if this was not blurred right let's just take that off for a minute look at how distorted the picture was because I just took the picture on my phone not like a fancy 1200 gig you know uh, mega megapixel uh, camera it's really quite crappy but when you blur it it's good enough no one's going to notice and it turned out I don't think anyone really noticed like the bench is yeah it's out of focus but you're not you, you don't care about that and by the time we get to here everything's in focus and it's fine um, it was very good to do this as well because it had a more of a sort of cinematic feel to it um, also the background's quite busy and sort of broke into uh, Phil's head as he was chatting so it's quite nice having it blurred yes down the road it would have been nice if I had the background slightly at bl more blurred the, at the bench as as it is um, you know racked to, to recreate racked focus basically but that's uh, that's why I did and then as I was saying the beauty is is once these things are, are laid in what I can then do is choose what elements I want to come up at what time you know this was the stage the the editing stage uh, where I decided that I wanted Phil and Pat to come up first not just the whole thing in one go and I wanted that to slowly fade in because they're separate elements I can do that and I can and it looks much nicer doing it here in fusion um, slash resolve than, than doing it any other, other way um, this this polygon there's a couple of polygons here that basically cut out the title from to make that two separate um, two separate plates basically so from one the beauty of, of, of this is just how easy it is to split stuff up and I can come back and I can actually just look to see oh that's, that's exactly what I did I mean it's a very simple comp there's nothing flashy about it at all but what it did give me an opportunity was to use a merge on the main titles uh, that gave me this gave me this really nice um, sort of the way it fades into the trees it's just a linear dodge that's all it is um, you know and once it's in there you can you can sorry you can change how you want to do stuff you know sorry exclusion my mistake you know you can change very quickly and easily how you want those things to be displayed like like that's quite nice as well actually I have to admit um, but there's that's the beauty of leaving it for the comp um, you can fix it later you can fix it later in post so that works out really well that worked out really well for me and then it was just a straightforward render and if we go back to the timeline I added some Netflix net Netflix style bars at the top of the bottom this is a two f two to one ratio because I felt it made it cinematic without me losing too much detail and um, you know yeah job done see not much editing because I basically did it all in technically there's there's two cuts so this is probably my flashes camera work the zoom out titles and then we're back on the bench job done didn't need to be anything flashy I originally was gonna have them talking back and forward he was gonna be rolling a join I was gonna have other stuff going on but there just wasn't time for it maybe when we come back I come back later and do the redo the redux it will it will um, We'll look back so that is uh, I think yeah that's it okay so I lied it didn't take 10 minutes sorry I did waffle a bit but this is this was the making of park life if you do have any questions just you know 
come and ask me um, leave your comments in the comments sort of things I guess we should before I sign off do uh, a very brief roundup of the lessons that I learned from from this so in no particular um, order uh, head turns and head tilts best to actually draw out the head turns and the head tilts first of all really important to do that because quite frankly um, the tools in Moho are not great for sort of winging it and I shouldn't have winged it um, frame by frame mouth animation definitely getting better at that I really enjoyed that process pin bones I didn't even talk about pin bones oh what a dick so I had some problems with the pin bones um, basically just with the um, with Phil's arms I've tried let's look at Pat Pat has regular bones here right he has a regular skeleton that moves like this and you can foreshorten his arms using the trim tool um, like so and it's fine it's fine there's another way of doing it where you basically set up this complicated chain and a lot of the bones are hidden so you can't see them where th these uh, pin bones are actually create sort of more of a naturalistic deformation but the problem I had with this was that I couldn't actually animate this for some reason um, now it's early days of me using this animation style but it did it, it, it presented it, its own interesting problems and it's something I'm gonna have to look at um, but it did make like foreshortening of the hands much easier to to do um, maybe use a pickup bone for the hand or something like that I just going to experiment with this more and find out why I couldn't I can't puppeteer with this stuff that's the only issue with it but it, it's it has a very nice sort of look to it and the way it distorts uh, very complicated to set up basically you have these pin bones that control the joints and then you have a whole bunch of uh, point regular bones that point at each other here to uh, control um, the actual movement of it and it was very complicated and I don't think I fully understand it myself so I'm not going to do like a quick tip tutorial that I would normally do until I've, I've, I feel like I've nailed it down and uh, the big problem I have at the moment is that the hands do this I'd like to just grab the hand and everything else to follow and it doesn't do that at the moment so that's something to learn um, but you know that's what it's about the whole process is about learning and that's what's good about having a deadline because you have a deadline you have to deliver something at a certain time it's arbitrary and it's self-imposed but it means that your work it, it lights a bit of a fire under your ass and then also it allows you to I've said this in other videos it allows you to let go of perfection it gives you an opportunity just to get something done move on get to the next thing and the beauty with this the beauty with Moho is I can come back and I can do it all again um, because these puppets are vectored I can change the animation I can alter a draw I could alter one part of it and then just re-render the whole thing and it would be fine unlike something like TV paint which I would have to just completely redraw if I want to do output this at 4k I just output it at 4k it will re-render it at 4k that's the beauty of this I'm not dissing TV paint because I love TV paint by the way so that's that's not it but yeah turnarounds deadlines are good let go of perfection um, too much detail on the clothes maybe keep it simple stupid kiss maybe we'll have to see about that um, and uh, but I do like the style and uh, I think I'm finding I'm finding me in these animations you know I'm finding because I'm not doing this for anyone else I'm literally doing it for myself I'm finding I'm finding my voice which sounds really pretentious but it's true um, anyhow that's definitely it um, thank you very much for uh, sitting through this if you did manage to sit through this um, remember I've got two YouTube channels I've got the coin up animator channel and then I've got the coin up which is my vlog channel which is where you would have found this and then I have just my pure animation channel which literally just has all my completed animations and there's quite a few and they're doing quite well so I'm very happy with all of that at the moment um, and it's slowly creeping up we're doing well and if you get a chance coinupanimated.com that's my website you know um, 
see my other stuff. This is this is my hub. This is you know see my my documentaries if you want or whatever. Someone's eating baked beans in the background, so I should probably go. Um, on some STLs, you can download my masks, but more on that later. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time. Stay cool till after school. Be good to each other. Ciao for now. Oh oh oh! One more thing. One more thing. Frame rate. I was not happy about the frame rate. I have plans for doing into the Spider Verse type things with frame rate. I was not happy. It should have been a lower frame rate, at least on the puppets. Uh, the mouth was fine, but the puppets itself, they're a bit too smooth. The way that Moho moves is a little bit smooth, but I'm sure I will get onto that later. Anyway, ciao for now. You can definitely go. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.